Welcome, tech enthusiasts! Today we're diving back into the GPIO Viewer, a tool that has totally changed how we interact with microcontrollers. Real-time monitoring of GPIO pin activities right from your browser. It's pretty amazing. Thanks to all your awesome feedback, I've pushed this tool even further to enhance its capabilities. Today I walk you through the latest features of the GPIO Viewer library that make it more powerful and even easier to use. Whether you're a pro developer or just starting out as a hobbyist, these updates are gonna make your projects clearer and streamline how you work. Let's get started. Just before jumping into the new features, let's quickly see how to use the library on your ESP32. Installing the library is a breeze with the Arduino IDE. Adding it to your code is super simple. Just open the example that comes with the library. You'll only need to add four lines to your own project. Pop the GPIO viewer's header file right at the top of your project. Declare a global variable for the viewer. And if your project isn't Wi-Fi ready, use the built-in connect to Wi-Fi function from the library. If your project is already connecting to Wi-Fi, you can skip that step. Then just add one single line at the end of your setup function to fire up the GPIO Viewer web application. And that's all there is to it. You don't need to change anything else in your code. For a more detailed installation instructions, see my GitHub repository. I have expanded support for more boards, responding to many requests for adding board images. Now finding your development board is straightforward. Just use the search bar in the menu. For instance, I can quickly locate all the Pico boards and pick the one I'm using. If your board isn't listed, no sweat. Use the generic view to see all pins and their activities. And if you need a new board, just drop a request on my GitHub repository. The link is in the video description. The sampling interval set in your code is neatly displayed on the far right corner of the web interface. You can freeze the display of incoming data to pause and take a closer look at what's happening on each pin. Inside each pin indicator, there's a bunch of useful info. Here I have the pin numbers, this is super handy, especially if your board doesn't have the pins labeled. Want to switch views to see what type of pin you're dealing with? Just click the pin icon on the bottom bar to flip over. You can access the legion here. D stands for digital pins, A for analog, and P for PWM, that's pulse width modulation. Now let's switch gears to pin modes the modes you've set in your code using the pin mode function. Here, each pin is tagged with a no for output, I for input, and a dash if the pin mode isn't set. It's a great way to quickly check how each pin is configured without having diving back into your code. Inactive pins are in gray, meaning they're just chilling out, no value is currently read from them. Click on any active pin and boom, you get more details like the pin type and the pin mode set in your code. Any PWM pins will always show output as pin mode because the SP32 set it this way by default. The magnify icons are there to help you zoom in and out. On an iPhone, just use pinch gestures. And that hamburger menu? It's your gateway to even more features, like checking the version of the GPIO viewer library currently running on your microcontroller or the web application version. There's also an about page where you can share your experiences, get help or request new board images. And if you're feeling generous, there's a link to my buy me a coffee page. Shout out to everyone who has supported me you guys are amazing. 
You can easily go back to the board view by clicking the GPIO viewer icon on the bottom bar. A quick word about my preferred microcontroller, the ESP32-S3, which comes equipped with PSRAM, an excellent feature for projects requiring substantial memory. I frequently work on graphic animations, which are memory intensive, and the ESP32-S3 with 8MB of PSRAM is my go-to choice for nearly all my projects due to its simple memory capacity. I have put the link to this model in the video description. The ESP32 information page gives you detailed information on your microcontroller, like the chip model and revision, the uptime of your microcontroller, and the built-in MAC address. The memory map page dishes out details on the current partitions on your microcontroller. Here we can see that my microcontroller has 5 partitions. You can see that I have 16 MB of flash memory and 1 MB is reserved for a SPIF file system and the sketch that I have uploaded is taking 5% of the flash memory. At the bottom we see the size of the heap and 30% is currently used by the code running on the ESP32. Now if I change for an ESP32 that has PSRAM enabled, you can see the new PSRAM block on the memory map. My ESP32 has 8 MB of PSRAM and my code is using 50% of that space. The heap memory is now shown in the PSRAM block. That's because the ESP32 can automatically use this extra PSRAM for the heap, significantly increasing the available memory for runtime use. The pin data graph allows you to see the last 100 pin values changing over time. For example, let's select pin 8. Its values are shown in real time on a graph. The time is in the interval you have set in your code. In my case, it is 75 milliseconds. Now let's compare with the values of pin 4. The graph is updated to show values from both pins in real time. You can freeze the graph to inspect values read from the pins. These buttons are shortcuts to select multiple pins. Digital allows you to select all digital pins. There's a lot in my setup. I can remove them by clicking the pin chips. You can also click the analog button to automatically select all analog pins. PWM to select all pulse width modulation pins. Output to select all pins defines as output and input for all input pins. I only have one input pin in my setup. It is a switch connected to pin 1. I can see the pin values changing as I pressed the switch. Keep in mind that the 75 millisecond interval isn't guaranteed to be exact. It largely depends on factors like your Wi-Fi's latency and speed, which can influence how quickly pin values are transmitted to the web application. The GPIO viewer library is super user friendly, but if you hit a snag and need a bit of help, just head over to my about page. From there, click the icon that takes you straight to the issues section of my GitHub repository. It's a great spot to browse through previously resolved issues. You might just find the answer you're looking for right there. Plus, don't miss the troubleshooting section on the repository's main page. I hope you're as excited as I am about these new features and that they help you tackle your projects with even more confidence and ease. If you have any questions or if there's a feature you'd like to see in the future, don't hesitate to drop the request in the issues section of my GitHub repository. I love hearing from you and your feedback makes all of this so much better. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and subscribe if you haven't, to stay on top of the latest features. Thanks again for watching.
keep tinkering, and I'll see you in the next video.